6 o'clock, and I'm going to call the 2019 deliberative session of the Town of Rollinsford School District to order. Uh, I've invited Mr. Hartford and um, members of the representatives of the RGS um, Student Council to lead us to the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, 
the nature of SB2, the nature of the state statute that we're uh, working under, is that this body can discuss, debate, and amend. It can't make a decision about whether or not uh, the article passes or whether it gets placed on the ballot. Uh, finally, I thank everyone who's come out tonight. I hope you find the meeting enjoyable. I, found, I hope that you find it that it's a worthwhile uh, use of your time. Uh, and I thank all the volunteers that have made this possible. Any questions? All right, we'll get into the business. There is uh, no discussion to be had on Warrant Articles no, uh, 1 through 4. Um, the nominations have been formally closed by state statute, uh, and the persons who have um, signed up to run for office, their names are going to appear on the ballot uh, as printed in the warrant, and there's nothing uh, further that this meeting can do about it. Uh, warrant Article 5 is the school district budget, and I believe that um, uh, Ms. Leach will introduce the school budget to us. Um, 
though it's small, I feel we should just acknowledge it. Um, going forward, guidance services um, based on health insurance savings um, were down by $1,769. We'll also be adding a partition to um, a room so that we can have some separate space to be used um, for guidance services. Uh, nurse services were up by $836 based on some supplies, software, um, salary and benefit changes. Speech services, um, <coughs> similar reasons, were down by $2,398. Um, PTOT um, and adaptive PE, this is um, a current need change. Our staff has done a really great job in making sure that we're right-sizing <coughs> this number based on what our students need and what our staff needs to provide the services for the students. So that is a decrease of $15,632. Um, testing services down by approximately $2,000, and that's based on the actual cost. Uh, library and services were up by $3,697. Um, again, salary and benefit changes, some supplies, furniture, etc. Um, school board, we are down by $3,144, which um, is related to a decrease in our SAU assessment, legal service, increase in legal services and audit expenses. Um, we've chosen to increase our legal services line this year. Uh, as many of you have probably heard, we, um, our, our, our uh, summer's worth has decided to proceed with a withdrawal from SAU 56. So we expect that we are going to need some further legal services than in a normal year for us to be able to manage um, that, whether we um, end up creating our own committee or otherwise. Uh, school administration, um, up by $2,400, salary and benefits increase, um, property and liability insurance, down by $1,855. Custodial services line is up by $6,460, um, based on some uh, equipment needs and replacement and a salary benefit change. Utilities up by 6,000 um, based on actual usage. Our maintenance line is um, a decrease of $17,635. Um, notably, that is based on a reduction um, in the fact that we had uh, $93,000 worth of warrant articles that were maintenance lines last year. So that reduction includes a reduction <coughs> on what our approved budget maintenance line was plus the warrant articles. Uh, 2640 equipment maintenance, we are up by $10,050. Um, that is, uh, there's a list here, fireproofing the stage curtain, um, quarterly drinking water tests, yearly indoor air quality tests, fire extinguishers, sprinkler, etc. So mostly um, safety related items. Uh, transportation is down by 34,653. Um, we had our um, regular contracted increase to our first student contract um, expenditures. Uh, however, um, we also had a decrease um, from the special education transportation um, based on current enrollment um, and then an increase to field trip transportation. Uh, other benefits and support services, we have um, a couple of our fabulous teachers retiring this year. Um, so we are uh, we have increased that line by 52,739 um, based on the approved retirements. Uh, capital reserve transfer is down by $75,001, um, and that is based on the board articles from last year. We transferred $75,000 into our capital reserve fund 
um, we will once again be putting that on, um, putting a word article for a capital reserve transfer on there, but it's not included in the operating budget, therefore that line is decreased by $75,000. Um, and uh, the default budget, um, if we do not end up passing our proposed budget this year, the default budget, budget will be uh, $5,347,000. This last slide outlines some of the things that we will not be able to get if we um, if we don't pass our proposed budget. Um, there are items that will affect the learning and education uh, in this school, um, as well as uh, some of the safety and security items for our children. Um, literacy interventionist position, position uh, internet access points, a movable partition in the guidance, um, area, nursing supplies and software, PT and OT supplies, library furniture and software, um, the legal services that we uh, will likely need for the SNU withdrawal, um, increase in head teacher stipend, salary increases for the non-union staff, custodial equipment, utility costs, ground maintenance and maintenance repairs. Um, the full tax impact, it's a negative tax impact of the operating budget, is um, negative $1.19. Excuse me. The operating budget is $1.15. Got it. Okay. The $1.19 is the total for everything. Um, so, I think, uh, <coughs> I would like to point out, first of all, that the administration and staff have done an excellent job to really um, break out our numbers, um, keep our costs down, and work with what we already have currently. Um, their, their appropriate use of, of health care has kept our health care costs down, our, um, our building insurance costs are low. Um, and these are all due to the excellent efforts of our administration and staff at this building. Uh, so, with that, Mr. Moderator. Thank you very much, Ms. Leach. We're uh, open for discussion and debate on Article 5 of the budget. So, Leopold, 426 Washington Street. I'm wondering if the school board has any money built into the budget in case we have a couple of new special ed students come in. Is there contingency in the budget? Would that come right out of the regular budget? Question to uh, the school board through the moderator regarding the impacts of increases or decreases in special ed. Uh, so, it, that is not built into our operating budget, however, we do have a, a special education fund for, um, for any un, you know, uh, you know, previous unknown needs that will come up. The total in that um, right now is $155,189. Would the school have to exhaust all of their other funds before going into that fund? The question is, again, through the moderator, whether the school would have to exhaust other funds. Yes, we would. Okay. Um, so, co-curricular, is that just, like, insurance stuff? I don't understand when you say co-curricular, what that means. Again, a question through the moderator for the school board regarding the meeting of co-curricular. Um, this line has been in the past for the intramural um, sports things that we've done in, um, at the school. So, if, are we saying we're not doing that anymore? So again, if there's a Sorry. question, Ms. Leopold, what we're trying to avoid is crosstalk that's going to detract uh, from the rest of the uh, members of the body understanding what, what's before us. So, um, individual conversations with members of the board, you're welcome to pursue those outside of this meeting. Yes. Question. 
is does the school support currently co-curricular activities and will they be continuing in the future? A question through the, mod through the moderator regarding continuing support for co-curricular activities. I'm not sure that that's a budget question because the budget hasn't changed very much at all. Um, the school makes every effort to support co-curricular activities. Uh, we have had, a, uh, I understand, the board understands that we've had a difficult time finding uh, adults to, to, to do something, to take on some of those roles. But the, our budget has not changed except to go up by $9 to, to cover some of that. Okay, thank you. Um, the truancy officer, um, would he have additional um, duties for the additional fee, or is this just to cover in good faith what it's been doing already? Okay, a follow up question regarding the truant, truant officer? Um, that would just be if there are unknown expenses that are tied to truancy. Um, um, a question of utilities. The town has already said that water and sewer is going up. I'm wondering if the school is tied into the town's water and sewer department and if that has been included in your projections of the rate increases. Again, a question through the moderator regarding water and sewer fees. Yes and yes. Um, my last question is, um, you said there's an increase to field trip transportation. I'm wondering, um, how many field trips does the budget allow for, and does that account for students paying their own way when field trips are offered? And a question through the moderator regarding field trips and the expenses there for. Right. It's two hundred dollars for nine classrooms. Um, I don't know. I don't have any information on whether that will affect. Further debate and discussion on Warrant Article 5. I've been asked to uh, provide a full reading of each of the Warrant Articles, so I'll include that in our discussion. Article 5, to see if the Rollinsford School District will raise and appropriate as an operating budget, not including appropriations by special warrant articles and other appropriations voted separately, the amount set forth on the budget posted with the warrant or as amended by the vote of the first session for the purposes set forth therein, totaling Five million five hundred forty-two thousand twenty-three dollars, and it's repeated there in um, uh, words. Period. Should this article be defeated, the art, the default budget shall be five million three hundred forty-seven thousand forty-three dollars. Again, spelled out in uh, English words, which is the same as last year, comma with certain adjustments required by previous action of the Rollinsford School District or by law or the governing body may hold one special meeting in accordance with RSA 40, 13, 10, and 16 to take up the issue of the revised operating budget only. This is Budget Committee and School Board recommend. Any further debate and discussion, request for information on Warrant Article 5? Find that the debate on Article 5 is over, the budget is amended, will be placed on the ballot. Warrant Article 6 relates to approving cost items included in the collective I'm sorry, not the, it will be placed on the ballot as published, I apologize. Um, Warrant Article 6 relates to approving cost items in the collective bargaining agreement between Rollinsford School Board and the Rollinsford Educational Association, which relate to increases in salaries and benefits. And um, Mr. Kunz and Ms. Anderson will introduce that Warrant Article to us.
those of you who have been attending our monthly school board meetings, you will know that the uh, Rollinsford School Board, the main, one of the main goals we've had this year is uh, bringing our paraprofessionals up to the, the correct uh, salary, um, pay salary level. And uh, this is uh, something that we stressed during the negotiations. Disagree with that. Um, and after several meetings, uh, we did come to an agreement which was approved by the Rollins Street School Board and the association uh, to put forward. Um, the uh, first thing, and as I said, it's a very short uh, uh, warrant, but the first thing we agreed to was a 1% increase for the teachers uh, and I won't go into the all the detail I also at Bakadovsky our superintendent who may be able to provide a little more detail as to the the uh, way we work the, the power professionals and bringing them up to the correct level I don't know if anybody has any questions regarding the numbers when we get to that point <coughs> but the total increase for getting the powers where they need to be and getting the 1% one, 1 salary increase, uh, the total increase uh, for this year is $61,003. And that comes to a, a tax impact of 22 cents. And this was uh, reviewed as well by the, uh, by the budget committee recommended it. Thank you, Mr. Coates. Anything else? All right, we're in discussion and debate on Warrant Article 6. And I'll read it. Um, to see if the Rollinsford School District will vote to approve the cost items included in the collective bargaining agreement reached between the Rollinsford School Board and Rollinsford Education Association, which calls for the following increases in salaries and benefits at the current staffing levels. There is a table that follows, and I will do my very best to read it in a way that could be intelligible. Um, so for the school year 2019-2020, teachers, salary increase 14891 FICA and retirement 2813 for a total increase for teachers 17704 For paraprofessionals, salary increase, same academic year, 1920, 37 thousand fifty seven dollars FICA and retirement six thousand two hundred and forty two dollars for a total increase for paraprofessionals of forty three thousand two hundred and ninety nine for a total increase of salary of fifty one thousand nine hundred and forty eight a total increase of FICA and retirement of nine thousand fifty six and a total increase of salary FICA and retirement of sixty one thousand three dollars and furthermore to raise and appropriate the sum of $61,003, printed here now in uh, Arabic numerals, for the upcoming fiscal year, such sum representing the additional costs attributable to the increase in salaries, I assume comma, FICA, and retirement benefits at current staffing levels paid in the prior fiscal year, budget committee and school board recommend. Any further debate or questions on Article 6? Find the debate on Article 6 is concluded, uh, and it will be placed on the warrant, on the, I'm sorry, on the ballot uh, as published. Article 7 relates to raising and appropriating money to be added to the regular education expendable trust fund. And uh, Judy Nelson will introduce Article 7 first. Um, Article 7, uh, we laid the groundwork for last year when we uh, established the trust fund for the expendable trust for regular education. We opened it with one dollar last year. Uh, this year we are starting to fund that, uh, th that, that tuition trust fund. This will allow us right now, uh, it, for the last few years since we started, except for the first year that we attended Marshwood, we have always built in a few extra tuitions um, in case people move in and so we don't get caught short having to pay uh, our, our contractual agreement of tuition to Marshwood. 
Uh, what we'd like to do is get that tuition money that we put in our budget, in our operating budget, out of the operating budget and simply have it available in this expendable trust as time goes on. So this year we are asking to fund that at uh, 22, uh, essentially two tuitions at $22,000. We are looking to fund that from, um, from uh, surplus from this year's budget, so there would be no uh, effect of, uh, there would be no amount raised by taxation. So that's, uh, that's that, and it is recommended by both the school board uh, and the budget committee. Thank you, Ms. Nelson. Uh, we're in discussion and debate on Article 7. Ms. Leopold? I am wondering if this fund requires a town meeting to withdraw money, or if the school board is agency over the money. The school board has agency over the money. <coughs> That's all right. I, that's quite all right. We're good. We just try not to let it happen again. <laughs> Further discussion on Article 7. I'll read the article to us. To see if the Rollinsford School District will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of up to $22,000, printed again in Arabic numerals, to be added to the regular education expendable trust fund for regular education pre tuition previously established. This sum is to come from June 30, 2019 fund balance available for transfer on July 1, 2019. No amount to be raised from taxation, Budget Committee and School Board recommend. Find the debate on Article 7 is over. The article as published will be placed on the ballot. Warrant Article 8 relates to raising and appropriating money to be added to the Rollinsford School Building Capital Reserve Fund. And again, Ms. Nelson from the school board will introduce the article to us. All right, most of, uh, most of us have seen this article before. We, we have it in uh, pretty often. Uh, we do have um, a, 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 a school building uh, <coughs> improvement capital reserve fund it, the current balance in that is $178,472. Uh, last year was the first year that we were fully aware that we could really use it as a capital reserve fund. So we have started trying to fund it at greater rates. Last year we, um, we used $75,000 of uh, money that was left in our budget last year and, and we funded that. And this year we are asking to do the same, that if we indeed have uh, some money left in our uh, unexpended funds in our budget at the end of uh, this school year, we would like to take $75,000 and increase the, the amount of, of the capital, uh, building capital reserve fund. So no amount to be raised by taxation again. We have a number of large items coming up that will need to be addressed, uh, our boiler being one of them. And just as an aside, uh, luckily we have a very good uh, facilities director and, uh, and a very observant staff. There was a leak in the building, I believe Sunday night or into Monday, um, that they were able to fix thanks to um, our facility director's <coughs> um, expertise and, and worked his way down through the solutions that would work. And uh, so while we've had to make a, a quick repair, we lost no school time, no, no, no instructional time, and we're able to move forward. But it, it is it proves to us that we have an aging system here. Anyway, we have a number of large ticket items coming up, so we're trying to build up this uh, capital fund so that we'll be, so we'll be able to start using it in the fu in near future. Thank you, Ms. Nelson. Uh, we're in discussion and debate on Ward Article 8. Ms. Leopold? I'm wondering if there's a capital improvement plan that lists all the projects and where it can be found by the public. Question to the moderator to the school board regarding the existence of a capital improvement plan. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, yes, we, we have a, a sort of an informal list that we are working on making more formal, and it will be made um, certainly available in sort of all the usual places. We'll get it out um, maybe as a, a frequently asked question or something like that, but we'll try to get that information out to folks. Any further discussion and debate on Ward Article 8? I'll read the article to us. To see if the Rollinsford School District will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of up to $75,000, printed again in Arabic numerals, to be added to the Rollinsford School Building Improvement Capital Reserve Fund previously established. This sum is to come from June 30, 2019, fund balance available for transfer on July 1, 2019. 
No amount to be raised from taxation. Budget Committee and School Board recommend. Any further discussion and debate on Warrant Article 8? Find that it's concluded. The article as published will be placed on the ballot. Warrant Article 9 relates to establishing a planning committee to study the feasibility of withdrawing from SAU 56. And Ms. Kavanaugh from the School Board will introduce that article to us. Uh, so, uh, as you've all heard, uh, Summersworth has initiated the process of withdrawing from SAU 56. Uh, now that they've done that, Rollinsford essentially has two options. Uh, the first is to form a committee to study what our options are at this time, and that's what this warrant concerns. Um, the other option is to do nothing and to stay in SAU 56 when Summersworth withdraws. Um, in that case, we're really at the mercy of, of what they decide will work for our town. Um, most likely, we would need to restructure the SAU and scale it uh, to work for our district. So for those reasons, the school board really feels that it's in our best interest to pass the article uh, to form the committee to study the options. So should the warrant pass, uh, the committee will be comprised of four community members, uh, two school board members, the superintendent, and a financial representative. And over the course of the next year, they will explore all of our options, um, weigh the factors, hold some uh, public forums as well, and finally submit a proposal to the State Board of Education uh, for review and approval. And should that pass the state's uh, review, then the committee will present their recommendations to the board, and finally, the recommendation will go on the ballot next year uh, for the voters to consider. So it's a long process. Um, there are lots of checks and balances along the way. Um, the State Board of Education is involved to make sure that um, each district gets, gets the services that they need, um, whatever the end result may be. Um, so, if you look through the packet a little bit, we provided a lot of background information on this because this is new to all of us, um, new to the community. Um, we also have a potential timeline of how things will unfold uh, should the warrant pass. But um, the upshot is that for us to really be able to explore all of our options and make the best decision, uh, it makes sense to form the committee and, and study our options. So, Thank you very much, Ms. Carroll. We're in discussion and debate on Warren Article 9. Tracy Lorian, uh, Karis Drive. I just want to thank you for um, talking about and initiating this committee. Um, it gives us a voice, it gives us a say, it gives us a chance to take part in the future of, of what's going on out there versus having Summersworth or anyone else just kind of tell us what we should do. So this is a really important thing for us to be able to have a say in what we're going to be doing. So thank you very much. Thank you. Further discussion to be on no more article 9. Lucy Putnam, Sligo Road. Um, Mr. Moderator, I'm wondering whether or not uh, Summersworth has decided completely to approve to withdraw at this point so that uh, or whether they are still in the decision making process. I read an article in the paper that made that uh, a little confusing for me. Okay, so a question through the moderator for I think either the SAU staff or for the school board about the status of Summersworth's um, uh, effort to withdraw from the from the union. Uh, yes, Summersworth has made that decision and also formed a committee to study uh, how to proceed once they withdraw. Uh, it has a similar timeline um, to what we would do here. Uh, they have to uh, also do some public hearings in our community and uh, apply to the state for approval and that sort of thing. But yes, it's in motion. And I'm going to recognize Mr. Gadomsky unless there's any objection. Mr. Gadomsky? I'm sorry, Dr. Gadomsky. Just to clarify. The, the Summersworth uh, School Board and the City Council have approved the Withdrawal Planning Committee. They're, they're, they haven't decided whether they're going to withdraw or what they're going to do. They've just decided to form the committee, much the same as this Warren article is going to ask you to do for, for your community. Thank you, Dr. Gadomsky. 
of the discussion and debate on Warrant Article 9. I'll read the article in its entirety. To see if the Rollins Road School District shall create a planning committee under the provisions of RSA 194 capital C for the feasibility of the Rollins Road School District's withdrawal from School Administrative Unit 56. Any further discussion and debate? Request for information on Article 9. I find that debate on Article 9 is over. The article as published will be placed on the ballot. Article 10 is a uh, by petition and relates to negotiating a contract with, uh, I'm going to say MSAD, um, Maine School Administrative District 35 for 6th grade students to the South Berwick School District. And um, is there a representative of the petitioners here to introduce the article to us? Um, Ms. Nelson, do you wish to introduce the article to the voters? Uh, sure, sure. I'll, um, I'll, I'll speak to it very briefly. Um, the school board is essentially neutral on this. It is something that, uh, because this is by petition, maybe it's important for all of you to know it, that we discuss the, the possibility of sending our sixth graders almost every year. It is already in our contract with Marshwood that we can send our sixth graders if we decide to do so. Um, so we don't have to enter into any new negotiations to do that. Um, and, and as you are all aware, and as we are very well aware, there are going to be some, uh, some big changes happening in the next year or so. Um, anyway, this is something that is always on our radar. It's always a discussion point um, that, that we are doing. We, um, but again, uh, we are neutral. We see no reason to have this uh, warrant on there. Um, it's advisory. Um, it's something we do every year anyway. Thank you, Ms. Nelson. And the school district attorney asked me to um, make sure that voters are aware that the effect of uh, petition Article 10 or warrant Article 10 is advisory in nature. It doesn't bind the district to do something it uh, suggests or, or um, advises them to do. We're in discussion and debate on warrant Article 10. Ms. Nicole? Um, is there an average number of kids per grade that the school board might know, or one of the administrators, how many kids this would affect this in the over the next couple of years, and whether or not there's um, that would affect the staffing and the space of the school. So, question for the school board through the moderator about the impact on enrollments uh, here at base uh, RGS over the next few years. We. We, we, we are not really going to enter into debate on this. We are not the petitioners. Um, this is something we look at every year. Further discussion and debate on Warren Article 10. Hi, Sharon Kennard at 517 Silver Street. Uh, I could stand up here and give you a million charts and graphs of when to start middle school, but as a math teacher myself, I know you can find a million saying the opposite, so I won't waste your time. Um, I hope to get signatures on this warrant and learned a lot from many townspeople I'd never met before, not all positive. There was a large number of people who want our school to send the sixth graders to Marshwood and either can't make the meeting or don't say much, and due to fear of their children being treated unfairly at the school, <coughs> differing opinions. I've been told I'm wrong about wanting our students to go to sixth grade in Marshwood from several people in the school. Here are some of the comments I got in my responses. One comment is, I don't, we don't want to lose our sixth graders as we have to lose some of our staff. Well, you have a lot of staff here, more than I've ever seen in any other school I've been to. Also, you have two teachers retiring this year, so you should be all set and have nothing to lose. Second, we want to keep our kids as young as we can. Well, you put kindergarten and first grade in the same class, how do you keep your kindergartners young? Or do you hold your first graders back from learning all they can? Also, when it comes to research, you put all your kids K through six out all at once. How does this keep the younger kids young? Mine, come home, mine came home with a lot of upper elementary students um, wording, and it wasn't amusing. Also, one year you put grades four, five, and six in the same classroom. How is putting children from fourth grade with preteens in sixth grade keeping fourth grade young? The last I heard was there was a big difference between 6th and 7th graders and it would be better to keep 6th grade here. There is a difference between each grade throughout all the academic years. I taught middle school for almost 15 years, and yes, there is a difference. 
Sixth grade is a great year to transition if you prepare them. Marshwick School starts at sixth grade, and our students should be starting at the same time as the other students. This way, all students from all the towns transition at the same time to life in the middle school. When my daughter started here in first grade, she had a hard time transitioning. And I was told by a staff member here that she would never really fit in because she didn't start here in kindergarten. The staff member went on to say that since kindergarten is the start to the school year, that is when all the cliques and friendships start. So if we go on her explanation, how wouldn't it be the same idea as sending our kids to sixth grade when it starts and not in seventh grade when all the cliques and friendships have already begun? Rollins were joined Marshwood based on their academics and educational environment, but not, by, but not sending our kids to the middle school in sixth grade when it starts to put kids at a disadvantage. The students who get to start here at sixth grade are able to use to change altogether. Yes, I understand the children get used to it fast, and those are the students who do well no matter where they go. Not all students are like that. When this decision is made, it needs to be made with all the students in mind, just not the small group you know or deal with on a daily basis. Thank you. Additional comments for discussion and debate on Ward Article 10. Joe DeLaboy Carnes, 28 Adam now. Um, uh, I'm just curious, is this is the Marshwood math teacher still coming down and helping our sixth graders? Question for the board through the um, moderator regarding the assistance of a math teacher from the Marshwood School District. Maybe it's one that the school I, principal could help I'm, us I'm, I'm, I'm not sure that that's a budget question, I mean, a question on this warrant article, so if you could... But it does affect the warrant article, because we're talking about sixth graders. This, this isn't our warrant, so I mean, if someone can answer that... Uh, yeah, or... Let's see if Mr. Hartford can help us out. Mr. Hartford? So currently we don't have any teachers from Marshwood coming to our school to work with our students. Um, we recently made a visit, the teachers and myself, to Marshwood to speak to some of the middle school math teachers um, to work on transitioning them better into their school so that we know what they're using for curriculum, programming. Um, the math teacher does come at the end of the year to help um, provide an assessment for our kids. Uh, because in middle school the students are separated into different levels for their math courses and that's one of the pieces that they use as um, a math assessment that they design in order to put them into the correct um, math courses over there. With that being said, along with everything else, I do feel like the sixth graders should be moved over as well. We have a lot going on. We don't know what's going to happen with the SAU. We just don't know, and that might save up some space here if we have to create a superintendent and a special ed and everything else that's going to come with it. We don't know, so we'll, we'll study committee. But my recommendation is you guys should really think about it this year. I know it's always been on your radar, but I think it's time. Thank you. Thank you. For the discussion and debate on Warren Article 10. Michelle Small, 631 Main Street. Um, I just have a comment. Having had three kids go through Rollinsburg and into Summersworth in seventh grade, um, when we came as a family, I was of the mind to keep them young, and I, so I understand all of that. But having had three kids go through, I can tell you that the transition when um, the middle school has formed, and in Summersworth it was five through eight, which was even more formed. Um, it was really difficult for all three of my kids who are all very different um, in personalities and academics. So I, I too believe that allowing the kids to go all at once, everybody meets and becomes friends and there's a less social transition for our children. Thank you. Before I declare debate to spoke. Lucy Putnam, Sligo Road. I'm just curious if the school board has any sense, I realize it's not your board article, but uh, Mr. Moderator, I wonder if the school board has any sense of the cost impact, if it would be a cost savings 
or um, if it, there would be additional costs through making this change? Question uh, through the moderator and the school board, uh, whether there's been any cost analysis done. Uh, we have done a little back of the envelope because we do every year, uh, essentially. Um, if our, if we, it, it, at a minimum, it's a quarter of a million dollars, um, and it would not be a savings at this point. Uh, the, the, any staff changes we would make would not make up a quarter of a million dollars. We do not just, when we look at it, we do not just look at it from a monetary point of view, however, um, and, but we will continue uh, to look at it. Thank you. Tracy Lorian, uh, Karis Drive. Um, I just want to, I'm not in support of having our sixth graders go over to Marshwood. I also had three children go through this school and go over to Summersworth um, as seventh graders and each three are very different, very different. Um, and each of them found their way, did their thing and excelled in whatever they wanted to do. Um, one of the things I want to remind everybody is that we have these kids K through sixth grade and we're doing speech with them, we're doing special ed, we're doing all that stuff and from K through sixth grade we've got them in-house, we've got the OT here, we've got everything that we need here, speech and all of that. When we, if we have a sixth grader or something that goes over there, that's a la carte, that's by the hour, that's by the unit, that's by the it's, it's different. It's going to cost us. It's also out of district, so it costs us more to do any special ed or anything like that with our 6th graders, 7th graders, 8th graders, or, and up. So to be able to, I understand, you know, keeping them young, it isn't just that. It's from kindergarten through 6th grade. We are supporting them in-house. We're, it's already being paid for. It's already included. It's not something that we have to pay above and beyond for each single child. It's in groups or singles, and it's all included within the school versus piece by part and taken apart like that. So um, from kindergarten through sixth grade, a lot of these children are out of uh, their special ed or the, the bulk of it. They're out of their speech classes. They're out of their different things like that. So going into seventh grade, a lot of them have excelled and they don't need that anymore. So we're not paying by the hour, by the minute, by the whatever. So cost effective, if that's what's important to people, K through sixth grade, we're really, we're doing a full child here um, in-house and that's really important. Thank you. And before I forget, it looks like there's another speaker, but um, before I forget, I'll read the article in its entire, entirety to see if the Rollinsford School Board will negotiate a contract with MSAD 35 South Berwick School District to send all sixth grade students to MSAD 35 effective July 1, 2019 and to pay such tuition as negotiated from the funds provided through general taxation. Kim St. Clair, 14 Turgeon Way. Um, so uh, as being a member of the Budget Committee, I've seen that we actually have had a significant savings in special ed costs um, moving some of our kids to Marshwood. So I don't know that really using special ed as, an ex as a reason to not consider this is a, a good reason. Um, secondarily, could um, Ms. Nelson kind of elaborate on the quarter of a million dollar cost? Um, you know, what what that means, a quarter of a million dollars, and uh, what it means in terms of staffing changes for the grade school. Question uh, for Ms. Nelson through the moderator regarding the um, methodology for arriving at the quarter of a million dollars. Yeah, the back of the envelope was simply uh, taking an $11,000 tuition and applying it to 25 students. Um, so, it, so that's just the base. That's just the just base. It doesn't take into account if we... It, it's just the base. I mean, this is something that we have not... We obviously, this is not in our current budget for the coming year, so we haven't thought about that. Um, it, it would significantly impact the budget that we are um, that we are proposing here. Um, so no, I haven't looked at it any further than that. As when our discussions are usually held uh, as we start our budget process in October. Further discussion and debate on more Article 10. Last comment is where? Oh, you told oh. Okay. Yeah. You'd like to make a comment? Yes. yes.
Uh, just, just to bring everybody up to date now where we are with uh, tax, uh, the tax impact of all of the operating budget and all the warrants. That so are out. let's hold it for Article 11, other business that may come before the meeting. Um, Article 10 relates to the, the petition to uh, have the board negotiate with NSAT 35. I find that the debate on Warrant Article 10 is over. The article is published will be placed on the ballot. Warrant Article 11 allows this meeting to transact any other business that may legally come before it. Um, and it appears that there are at least two items of business that can come before us, um, Ms. Nelson and then uh, Ms. Anderson, I believe. Uh, thank you, Mr. Roger. I just wanted to uh, let everyone know the full impact. Emily mentioned it early on um, of the operating budget and all the other warrants. It is a negative dollar nineteen. So the school tax impact is going down um, in the coming tax year of by a dollar and nineteen cents. Yes, we would like to let folks know that um, MSAP 35 has been exploring the possibility of adjusting school times, in particular a later start time for the older students, um, and they would like to further engage the community, um, and they're holding two um, open um, discussions, and they will be held on Wednesday, February 6th, at 7 p.m. and another one will be held Wednesday, February 27th at 7 p.m. in the Marshwood Learning Center at the high school. Thank you. Any other discussion to come before the meeting? My question to the moderator to, um, is that for 7th through 12th grade, the late start, or is that just the 9th through 12th grade, or you said older kids, I was just wondering what age. A question from Ms. Anderson to the moderator regarding the impacts of the delayed opening or the change in opening times. They've been exploring um, a number of options. Um, they've done surveys, much research has been done. Um, they've had speakers on, on the whole of later start for middle schoolers through high school. Um, Marshwood is considering two options um, currently, one being not changing anything at all, another option to flip um, their elementary school times with their middle school through high school student um, times. Start, start. Start. Starting at sixth grade for Marshwood. Business to come before the meeting. I'll make a few. Oh. Lucy Putnam, Sligo Road. Just one more question. You were talking about the tax impact. If people were to vote against this budget at the polls, would it revert to last year's budget, which in fact would be higher? Question for the school board through the moderator regarding the impact of the default budget. It would revert to the default budget. Um, the proposed budget is the proposed budget is five million five hundred forty-two thousand twenty-three dollars, and the default budget is five million three hundred and forty-seven dollars and forty-three cents. Five million three hundred forty-seven thousand and forty-three dollars. Is there any other business to come before the meeting? I thank um, Town Clerk Kate Nesman. She did double duty tonight, uh, getting people checked in, and I really appreciate that. Uh, Judy Nelson, the school committee, met with me ahead of time to help organize this meeting to run more smoothly. Um, uh, Dr. Gdomski and the SAU staff were also helpful in getting this uh, meeting organized and I appreciate their help and I appreciate uh, Principal Hartford's help in uh, getting the participation of school students. I appreciate uh, Mr. Wardway and the Budget Committee for their uh, assistance in all the work that goes into preparing and reviewing budgets. Uh, finally, I thank all of the voters who came to this meeting tonight. I hope that you find it useful. Uh, a useful expenditure of time. Do we need help putting chairs away before I send people out? Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
the page needs to make a motion. Margaret, I think it should be all the way to default yes. Okay, default yes. We're going to help put chairs away if we can. I'll take a motion to adjourn. Thank you. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. And we are done. Thank you.